This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi, welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me and let me know if you like the tweaked opening. We're experimenting with some stuff to try and tighten things up a little over the next few months. After more than six years of research, development and engineering, Dutch EV startup Lightyear has finally revealed the production version of its first solar electric car, the Lightyear Zero. Known formally as the Lightyear One, the super streamlined full-size EV claims a production specification drag coefficient of just 0.19, a weight of 1,575 kilos, that's just shy of 3,500 pounds, and a WLTP range of 625 kilometers, 388 miles per charge of its 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. But its real party trick is its solar panels, which offer up to 70 kilometers, 43.5 miles of range per day on sunlight alone. Production begins in Finland later this year with just 946 units planned. Yes, this is a flagship halo car with an equally high quarter million euro price tag, but it's set to be followed in a few years by Lightyear's mass production solar EV models. Volkswagen has officially opened its brand new battery engineering lab in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where it will carry out climatic and mechanical testing on EVs and EV batteries. Costing 22 million US dollars, the battery engineering lab, aka BEL, will be the first Volkswagen test facility of its type in North America and joins three other facilities owned by Volkswagen carrying out similar testing in Germany and China. Testing includes a massive vibration rig designed to put vehicles under the equivalent of one year's worth of driving in one week, a massive climate chamber that can recreate any climate currently experienced on the planet, and much, much more. Its opening comes as Volkswagen readies US-made Volkswagen ID4s for deliveries to dealerships this coming September. That's several months ahead of its original plan of late October or November. After this point, all North American ID4s will be made in North America, different to the current situation where models being sold are shipped from Germany. It's official. European lawmakers have voted to ban the sale of new internal combustion engine cars and vans from 2035 onwards across the whole of the European Union. In total, 339 members of the European Parliament voted in favour of the ban, a ban proposed to the legislative branch by the executive branch of the EU. But don't think the vote was unanimous. In total, 249 votes were recorded against the legislation, with 24 MEPs abstaining from the vote. As you might expect, the proposed regulation met a lot of opposition, including from the European Automobile Manufacturers Association and its current president, BMW CEO Oliver Zips. The vote is a win for Europe's goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2050, and it puts its Fit for 55 plan within reach. That's a goal of cutting 55% of greenhouse gas emissions across the EU by 2030. But with a total of 27 member states, some of which were not in favour of the ban, the hard part is going to be getting those member nations to actually implement said ban. The wheels of politics often turn a little too slowly for real climate impact. US solar electric vehicle specialist Aptera has announced that Marathon Capital LLC, a major US cleantech investment bank and current investor in the firm, will lead its Series B funding round. Aptera now says it has 23,000 vehicle pre-orders worth a potential $800 million of revenue, assuming reservation holders actually follow through their reservations with confirmed orders, of course. It's not clear at this time how much Marathon Capital LLC is investing in the Series B, but Aptera says it's looking for a total investment of at least $200 million in order to transition from finishing vehicle engineering to going into pre-production prep. The same week, it confirmed that it successfully ended a crowdfunding round involving both individuals and institutions worth a total of $40 million. Aptera hopes its first production vehicles will roll off the line by the end of this year. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is quite an advanced vehicle 
in its stock form, thanks to it being based on the eGMP platform, a platform that includes 800 volt DC quick charging, two-way power transfer, and a bucket load of sensors and smarts for semi-autonomous driving. But in its home market of Korea, Hyundai has just gone one step further, launching a level 4 autonomous ride-sharing service in Seoul. While the vehicles will have a safety driver on board for now, level 4 autonomous vehicles are capable of carrying out pretty much all driving duties without driver input and, in order to be level 4, must not actually require a driver to intervene, something that's required for the less advanced level 3 operation. In order to progress to full level 5 autonomy, which is basically fully autonomous all the time with nobody in the car, the vehicle would need to handle everywhere in all conditions rather than operate in a geofenced area, which in this case is within the Gangnam district of Seoul. Guess it's going Gangnam style. The current US White House has officially proposed a new set of standards for EV quick charging as part of a drive to establish a nationwide EV charging network that's as easy to use as gas stations are. Issuing a notice of proposed rulemaking, the US DOT, Federal Highway Administration, has entered a period of consultation lasting just 60 days where anyone can submit proposals pertaining to minimum charging capabilities, signage, installation process, interoperability, standards, traffic control, network connectivity, roaming and payment of a nationwide EV charging network. When the 60-day consultation period is over, feedback will be taken into consideration by the government agency and a full set of regulations will be made by the FHWA. So, if you'd like to have a say in how EV charging is set out, including the standards or minimum service levels on offer, now is the time to get involved. Staying with politics, Senator Debbie Steinmeier from Michigan made remarks this week to the Senate Finance Committee talking about President Biden's proposed 2023 budget, which includes significant funds set aside to accelerate electric vehicle adoption. Discussing how she started driving an electric vehicle recently after waiting months for all of the computer chips required to build it, Senator Steinmeier detailed how she was able to go past every single gas station, a feeling that many watching will have experienced without worrying about gas prices. She added that she looks forward to helping move the country away from vehicles that are dependent on fossil fuels. But Fox News, the news network known for being a conduit for shouty Bob and his weird conspiracy theories, tried to claim she was quote unquote bragging about her position and the quote unquote expensive electric vehicle she purchased that most folks couldn't afford. The car she actually purchased wasn't a Tesla, but a Chevrolet Bolt EUV, a vehicle which recently had its sticker price lowered to start from under $28,200. Given the average sticker price of a new car is now above $32,000, this particular shouty bob moment was particularly faux, Fox. The US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA for short, has been investigating multiple crashes involving Tesla Autopilot and first responder vehicles. This week, it announced it is upgrading the investigation into what is known as an engineering analysis. According to its official announcement, this will include evaluating additional data, performing vehicle evaluations and, quote, explore the degree to which Autopilot and associated Tesla systems may exacerbate human factors or behavioral safety risks by undermining the effectiveness of the driver's supervision, end quote. Reading between the lines, it appears that NHTSA believes that Tesla's autopilot system is not sufficiently monitoring for driver attentiveness, stating that only two of the drivers involved in the 11 incidents it is investigating received driver engagement alerts in the five minutes prior to their crash. While Tesla always maintains that you should remain in control and keep your hands on the wheel at all times, this case is going to be potentially very important to reframe exactly when driver responsibility and vehicle responsibility come into play. So we will be watching this one with quite a lot of interest. There is nothing more frustrating than arriving at a charging station to find it out of action, especially if you're miles away from home and in a part of the country you're not particularly familiar with. Add in a tight schedule or an impending meeting and it can be a whole lot worse. Luckily, EV charging station reliability has come along in leaps and bounds in recent years thanks to the expansion of EV charging sites with multiple redundant chargers. But a recent survey by researchers at the University of California at Berkeley shows that there's a long way to go before EV charging station reliability is 
well, reliable. Studying a total of 657 individual CCS-compatible charging stalls at 181 charging sites throughout the greater San Francisco Bay Area, more than a quarter of tested stations were either non-functioning or had a charging cable that was simply too short to be used on some EVs. Worse still, 10% of the faulty units tested at random eight days later remained out of action. Given public funding requires a 97 to 99% uptime of sites in order to be funded, this is bad news indeed. As the price of energy continues to soar, there's a massive increase in interest in solar panels around the world, with some installation companies finding themselves booked out months ahead as people rush to generate power on the roofs of their homes. The US is no different, and with the federal tax credit for solar panels due to drop from 26% this year to 22% next, before disappearing completely, the rush is on to panel up. But a tariff on Chinese imported electronics is threatening the cost analysis of going solar, putting some people off as many panels are imported from China or use Chinese components. To tackle that challenge and give the US a chance to ramp up its own domestic solar panel production, President Joe Biden has just announced the US will waive all import tariffs for two years on all solar panels made in Southeast Asia. It comes after a Department of Commerce investigation which found that the tariffs were threatening the US solar industry. And while this particular story is about the US of A, don't forget that Ecotricity has an amazing list of solar partners that you can work with to bring solar panels to the roof of your home. And with New Zealand's leading solar panel price plans, Ecotricity is the best place to go to make solar more affordable and practical than ever before. All around the world, millions upon millions of tons of goods are transported around the world by ship. And to get those behemoths into and out of the port, there are thousands of tugboats whose job it is to help those ships dock safely. To date, those tugs have been traditionally powered by smelly diesel engines. But right here in New Zealand, Auckland is leading the way by welcoming Sparky, the world's first full-size ship handling e-tug, to its waters. Powered by a 2,780 kilowatt hours of batteries, Sparky, whose name was chosen by local residents, has a 70 ton bollard pull and is estimated to save 465 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. While Sparky is expected to only operate in electric mode, it also has two backup generator sets that the port estimates will be used once or twice a year to help return to port in an emergency. So here's hoping that we see more Sparkies help ships into harbour. And finally, it is pretty obvious by now that there's no love loss between Elon Musk and Ford executives, and both Elon and various Ford executives over the years have made jabs at each other for some time when it comes to EVs and EV sales. Often those jabs have been focused on sales volume or sticker prices, but this week, as more Ford F-150 Lightning pickup trucks are delivered to customers, we learned about a subtle but frankly very well-played addition to the charging equipment every F-150 Lightning now ships with. In addition to the mobile charging connection, Ford includes as a standard no-charge item, we've known for some time that Ford's charging kit also includes a special adapter to let F-150 Lightning owners use the Pro Power onboard outlet that their trucks have to charge a stranded EV. What we didn't know would be included, though, is a J1772 to Tesla inlet adapter. Many Tesla fans are upset, stating that Ford is just trolling Tesla by including a Tesla-specific adapter on a non-Tesla. But Ford, it says, it's just being helpful. Honestly, though, if it gets more people helping out other people to charge who are stuck at the side of the road, I am all for it. What do you think? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel, both from myself and the wonderful Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. And of course, if you haven't already switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful. I'll be back next week with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Get keep day. See you next time.